Welcome back chemists. In this video what I'm going to go through is how to calculate the pH of a weak base. This is actually the fourth video I've made on weak and strong acids and bases and how to calculate their pH. So check out those other videos. The first thing we're going to do is list the weak bases, or at least common ones. Second thing we're going to do is model the weak bases using little molecular model kits that I have here. The third thing we're going to do, which is probably the most important for many of you, is how to calculate it. So here is the practice problem that I'm going to do. And then you're going to have one too at the end, which is this one that you'll do, okay? So let's go through the list. Pyridine, ammonia, hydroxylamine, and methylamine are the most common weak bases. And take a look and see if you see something they have in common. And if you said a nitrogen, that's correct. Many weak bases have a nitrogen, and then many of them will have a hydrogen attached to those nitrogens. And that is what helps it be a weak base, okay? I'm going to take this one off of here, pyridine and hydroxylamine, and the two that we're going to go through in this video are these two. This is the one that I'm going to work through, and this is the one that you're going to work through, okay? So let's look at ammonia molecules and figure out why they're weak bases. So here's a whole bunch of them. I'm going to get that out of here. So they're NH3s. I'll try to put maybe four or maybe six on the screen here, shove them even over a little bit. They're going to act as a base, so think about what that means. That means they're going to um, remove or take a hydrogen um, from an acid. So the acid in this case is going to be our water. And then it's going to produce, let me slide these over. So they're going to try to um, accept a proton. So the water is going to donate. It'll turn it into a conjugate acid and, to slide these even over even farther, and a conjugate base. Okay, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that title unless I really slide these. Here we go. There we go. Hopefully that's in the screen. So what does that mean? It means that the water is going to act as an acid and turn into a base. There's your hydroxide ion, if you noticed. And ammonia is going to turn into ammonium and be a conjugate acid. Okay, so if I put the pluses between these two and I kind of slide these off, let me write down in formula what that looks like. You should have had a formula like this in your book. I'm just going to keep one of these because not all of them will ionize. They only partially ionize. So I'm going to put this at the bottom, which is what makes it a weak base. Okay, here's our arrow. Slide these around here. So this is going to be our NH3. Then you'll have a water molecule. It's going to act as the acid. You'll have two arrows going those two directions. And then it makes ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. So that's the equation and the particulate, kind of the particulate view of what's going on, okay? So let's get to the math, you're ready, okay? There are a lot of formulas that I'm gonna go through in this video. So we're gonna use that one, which is kinda, I call it an oldie but a goodie. We're gonna use the pH and the pOH both. We're even gonna apply this one that I haven't done yet in a video, which is the 10 to the negative pOH equals the hydroxide. And also, let me slide these all up, 10 to the negative pH is the hyd hydrogen ion concentration. We're also going to apply, see if we can get that one in there, pH plus pOH equals 14 at 25 degrees. Um, we even are going to apply what's called the ion product constant for water. I'll just put that one on top. And I'm just going to get rid of these two in just a second. Um, this is another calculation that we're going to use is that at 25 degrees, these two, when you multiply them together, equal one of the negative 14. And there are two more. There's so many, huh? Let me get rid of this one. The uh, hydroxide ion concentration could be found by taking the Kw, which is the ion product constant for water, and dividing it by hydrogens, or vice versa. The hydrogen ion concentration can be found by taking the Kw divided by the hydroxide. Okay. Let's see all these in action with a practice problem, okay? Here we go. So this is the practice problem I have, which is the equation that I just showed you. So we're gonna take and we're gonna calculate the pH of a 0.5 molar ammonia solution. So I'm gonna write down, again, the first I'm gonna write down is the equation or the equilibrium equation. I'm gonna write water as HOH instead of what I had before. That's okay, you'll see why. It turns into ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. That's what ends up making this be a base. And again, we're going to use the same method I used in a previous video, which is called a rice, or you can call it an ice table. So uh, reaction, initial change in equilibrium. Okay, so here we go. Oops, I threw a marker here. Maybe I better move this in. 
So what did I say? 0 0.50. So it has two significant figures. Concentration of water is not going to change. Start with zeros on here. Then you're going to say some amount is going to go over. And again, why this is happening is because ammonia only partially ionizes. So not all of the 0.5 are going to turn into these ions, okay? So then you're going to have 0 0.50 minus x, x, and x. Then what we need is we need the Kb. The Kb is called the base dissociation constant. Dissociation constant. And for ammonia, just trust me, you can find this in a textbook, that's where you'll need to look, is 1.8 to the negative 5. And then I'm going to write what's called the equilibrium expression, which is the ammonium ions concentrations times the hydroxide concentration divided by the ammonia concentration is going to equal that number no matter what, again, at uh, a certain temperature. So what you'll do then is you'll say, okay, those are x and x, so you're going to use your algebra here, 0.5 minus x on the bottom. Then you can simplify that to being kind of x squared divided by 0.5 minus x. Then we're going to use something that I used in a previous video, which is that if I take 400 times the k and it's less than the initial concentration, I can get rid of this x. I can neglect it. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So you take 400 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. It has to be less than the initial concentration, which is 0.5. Okay. So you just get your calculator, unless you're really fantastic at multiplying. Uh, I'm going to just check. Okay, so 1 point, oops, times 1.8, second EE, negative 5. Okay, so I get 0 0.0072, which is definitely less than, make sure I did this right, 1.8 times negative 5. Okay, 72 minus, and then 0 0.50. I had a different answer before. Let me just check it. So 400 times... Uh, 1.8 second EE and then negative 5. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, but it's less than that. So yes, we can what's called neglect X right there. So what does that mean? It means that it simplifies to just X squared divided by 0.5. That way we don't need to use the quadratic equation. Okay. All right, next we're going to go and then calculate what X actually is. So X squared is going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5th. I'm going to multiply that over, so times 0.5, which is just a half. And so that is actually going to equal, when you're done, I get that that equals 9.0 times 10 to the minus 6. That should make sense because you're taking half of that number. But we're not done yet. To get x, we're going to need to do the square root of 9.0 times 10 to the minus 6 which ends up being x equals, let's just check it. I'll do it with you here. So I'll go back and I'll even put the other numbers in here. Um, just in case you didn't want to trust your gut with that, you know, multiplying by uh, 0.5. Okay, so there's that 9 to the negative 6. So then we want to do second square root of that number, go grab it, bring it down. Okay, and that's why I got um, 0 0.003, 0 0.00, and then I'm going to add a significant figure because, again, my initial concentration had 2. Don't forget to put a unit that is the molarity. Now, what is this? This is actually the concentration of our hydroxide. So we solve one of the things in this problem. It's also the concentration of the ammonium ions if you needed it. Okay, so again, box that answer out for your teacher if you had to find the hydroxide. You already did that part already, okay? So let's keep going. What else do we have to do? I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to move this away. I'm going to solve for two more things. One, I'm going to get the pH, but I'm going to go through pOH instead. So I'm going to take the negative log of the OH concentration, which is going to be negative log of 0 0.0030. Okay. So let me do that quick with you here. So log because this is the first video you watched. I do have four of them, but maybe this is the first one. And then I didn't put the negative in there. You can put it at the end. I'm just going to add a negative or get rid of the negative. So I'm going to just say, okay, that equals 2.52287. Okay, so this, if this was the first video of the four you've watched, there are some rules with sig figs. The number of sig figs in the concentration is the number of decimal places in the pH. So that means I can keep two decimal places whether it's pH or pOH. So there's my pOH. So that's not my final answer. I'm just gonna kinda go like this, kinda sort of box it out. 
This is my pOH, so be careful. This is not the pH, plus that doesn't make sense because of it being so low. So then what do we do next? So I would then do another formula which says that if you take pH plus pOH, and we'll just assume this is happening at 25 degrees, it equals 14. So that means if I want to find the pH, I'm going to take 14 minus the pOH, which is 14 minus, and then this 2.52. Let's just check. I have been making mistakes today, so let's just make sure we get this right. Um, there we go, 11.48. Now that actually is another kind of final answer. I feel like it's like a game show. Is that your final answer? There you go, box it out. Your teacher can find it. She knows, or he knows, that you are doing correct chemistry. Okay, now we're not done yet. I'm gonna calculate one more thing. Let me switch back to the blue. We are going to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration. So you can do that two ways. You could take the KW and divide it by the OH, or, I like this way better, 10 to the negative pH is also the hydrogen ion concentration. I like that method. Why? Because you can just go 10 and then negative 11.48, and then this will be my last final answer, and then it's gonna be your turn. How exciting, right? Okay, so log, and then I'm gonna do, um, or not log, silly me, second to the 10, see what pops up? Okay, put on the negative this time. You can't forget this time. You actually need that because it'll change the answer dramatically. Um, there we go. Okay, so then I get 3.31. I'm just gonna keep two sig figs because my initial concentration only had two. So different sig fig rules, okay? And that again is my hydrogen ion concentration, which makes sense that that would be so much smaller than my hydroxide concentration. All right, I just barely enough room for you to see one more thing. If you wanted to check, I'll do this actually in this green color, you can take this concentration and multiply it by that one. So here's the last formula in action, because I said I was gonna try to show you all of these. This again is at 25. If you take this number right here, I'm gonna barely fit it on here, so 3.3 times 10 to the minus 12, and I multiply that by the hydroxide, which was there, 0 0.0030, you should get approximately one times 10 to the minus 14th, which I do, okay? So it, you know, it kind of checks out. So there we go, wow, okay. So if you watch other videos, the big thing that's new is that when we get to here, we calculate a pOH, then we calculate the pH. That's really the major difference, okay? Your turn now, how fantastic. So here's the practice problem. What I always say is write it down, Pause the video, do it, and then come back. Okay, so pause. Perfect, we're back. Here are the answers. So, first thing you wanna do is set up your rice table. If you wanna even check right away if you can neglect X, we can, okay? Then, here is the setup for the uh, equilibrium you know, expression, the KB, putting in the values I can ignore X. I'm then gonna find what X is. I went off kinda down here. You can see all in blue. Uh, I found the concentration to be 0 0.025, which is also this um, methyl amine ion, okay? Then I went off and did the pOH. That's not my final answer. I calculated the pH, calculated the hydrogen ion concentration. Again, don't forget to put molarities for concentrations. I actually did all the right sig figs, and in the end, I checked it out. Fantastic. Okay, off you go to do more practice problems on your own. Good luck, chemist. Check me out again in another video. I'm going to continue doing some more pH calculation videos soon. Good luck.